Lord God the Father, I just ask you to come. Be with your word, Lord God. Lord, help me that my sins are under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, me not being vile and a sinner, Lord, will interrupt Jesus Christ being praised. Lord, to you be the glory and honor, Lord, that nothing of error, nothing of evil, of sin be said, but truly exalting the word in Jesus Christ and the Father. And Lord, that we can grow more in you. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. John chapter 1. I'll say first John. John chapter 1, verse 13. A lot of these, you know, these verses that we have, I mean, there's a lot of context in them. I mean, I don't know when you thought, hey, we're going to open up the Gospel of John if we thought we'd be in chapter 10 by now. I mean, you get chapters like chapter 3 coming up and Look how much is in chapter 1. So John chapter 1 verse 13, which we've been for a while. And let's go to verse 12, just take the context. But as many as received him, that's us, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. We looked at where the children of God. Even to them that believe on his name, colon. So there's still more to the sentence, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God, period. And we've looked at the new birth, we've looked at our births, we've looked at the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus is God born. The virgin birth, and we looked at the virgin birth. If not of blood, it says, there was no human blood that ran to Jesus. We read it was Acts 20, 28. It's God's blood that ran to him. Sinless, holy blood. Now, we don't have that. We have blood right now that could be in our body working a disease that may cause us trouble for the rest of our lives. We don't know. Mm -hmm. But okay. what we said last time, when the doctor wants to know what's wrong with you, he'll run a blood test. So the will of the flesh. For Jesus Christ, and looks at the virgin birth of Mary, there was no flesh joining flesh. There was no marriage bed. Mary was a virgin. Joseph did not come to Mary. Mary did not have an outside uh, uh, relationship with Joseph. Even Joseph in the scriptures thought that was possible. That, hey, Mary's pregnant. I'm going to privily get rid of her. She's been unfaithful to me. And the Holy Ghost steps in and says, no, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. I, the Holy Ghost, am involved in that pregnancy. So, there was no male and female for the birth of Jesus Christ. You need a man and you need a woman. And even if you're going to do test tube or artificial, uh, anything like that, you still need an egg of the woman. You still need the sperm of a man. You, but Jesus Christ, it wasn't so. It was God, God the power of the Holy Spirit. And it was not a carnal birth by Jesus Christ or of Jesus Christ. It was of God the Father. And John 3, 6. John 3, 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's a human. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That's the new birth. In a way, but not in a way, we can also ascribe that to Jesus Christ because he's 100% man of Mary, not Joseph or any other male. And yet he's 100% God of the Spirit. And when we're talking about the birth of Jesus Christ, and we're talking about the humanity of Jesus Christ, which he's 100% man and 100% God, there's only one thing that he lacks. He lacks that sinful nature that we are born of Adam. And yet in, in uh, Luke chapter 3, in the genealogy of Mary, his mother, we can run his seed all the way back to Adam. But that's a woman. That's not the man. And that proves the prophecy. What's the greatest prophecy that Jesus is God and God is Jesus? In the book of Isaiah, it speaks about a virgin shall give birth to a son and a child is given. 
Well, if that's not God, then what is it? It would be a horror movie of, of a child that's born the Antichrist or a child that's born the enslaved people in the camp, whatever. No, that's not the case. It's Jesus Christ manifested in the flesh. First John 2.16 And I may say, and I do sound a little tongue-tied, because it's hard to explain that. 1 John 2.16. I was going to read 3.16. Uh, 2.16. See, what we have is, is thing, everything with God is out of our realm of, of explanation. Explain to me what God, explain to me where God came from. There was no coming from from God. Explain what God is. There, I mean, God is holy. What is holy? I don't know. What happened that day when Gabriel said, Mary, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you, and you're going to be nine months with the Messiah? And you guarantee people would look at Mary, you're pregnant? Uh-huh, yeah, sure, right, you and Joseph. She hid herself at her cousin Elizabeth's house. Because she knew the bad mouth of the brother. So John 3, 6, uh, 2, 16, For all this is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not in the Father, but in, is in the world. The lust of the flesh. Not of flesh we read in John 1. I'm trying to be as clean as I can, but there was no marriage bad relations of Mary at all to anybody and yet God and you can't say impregnant because you would get into the realm of the gods of the Greeks and the Romans where they impregnated humans. You would run into the realm of Genesis chapter 5 where the angels saw the, the women and the, the daughters of men and, and had marriage bed relations with them and produced the giant. It is without that flesh. And what we just looked at here in John chapter 216, those are the three tools of Satan that he uses on every man since Adam and Eve. The lust of the flesh, that's carnal. And lust of the flesh, look at advertising. Look at the pornography market today. Mm. The lust of the eyes, he saw that fruit, look how great it is. You have a man, he looks upon the pornography, he looks upon a woman, and she don't even have to be naked, he looks upon a woman, and that desire, that was not there for, for Mary, that was not there on the realm of Jesus Christ. And then the pride of life, look who I am, look how great it is, look at my diploma, look, no, that wasn't, there was no pride that Jesus walked up to the people in Israel and said, my father is truly the father, and, uh, you know, you're just born of a man. And there was nothing like that. My, my birth was on the, you know, the virgin birth. No, he didn't have no pride in that. He came as a humble servant. They chastised him, you know, we're not born of fornication at one time. Even they said Mary was unfaithful. Even they denied the virgin. When they said that, you know, we're not be born of uh, fornication, they denied the virgin birth of God manifested in the flesh. So, now what we see here is the flesh and the spirit that we saw in John chapter 3, they are enemies. And if you have ever been a true Christian trying to do right in your life, and you come up time in your life where you want to do something wrong, and God's like, don't do it. Oh, don't do it. And then you have the time when you want to do something right for God. And then the flesh steps in and says, no, don't do that. I'll give the greatest case I've ever heard anybody who wants to try to do right with God. I was going to give him a gospel track, but I didn't. I was going to give him a gospel track, but I did not have one. Oh, I want to do this, but I know the Bible says I shouldn't, but I should. A lot of times that runs with the tongue, James said. So Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. The flesh and the spirit. And when now we're talk I'm talking only about really now Christian. 
And I don't know if you realize the day that you got saved, that God did not take away this evil flesh, you're still going to sin. If we confess our sins, He's faithful to judge and forgive us our sins. And yet the Bible does say we don't sin because we're born of God, but this flesh. You have two characters inside of you now. You've got the Holy Spirit growing in your heart, and you've got this old wicked, vile flesh that doesn't care about the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit doesn't want anything to do with the flesh. You're, you have a battle inside yourself. You've got a battle, the Bible speaks of, God gives us an armor for the principality and the devil. You've got a battle with him, never mind other Christians. And inside yourself, you want to do right. Your, your flesh doesn't want to do right. And your flesh wants to do wrong. And the Holy Spirit says, no, I don't want to do that. Try Sunday morning when you go, want to go to church. And you go, oh, I just had a sleepless night. I'm just so tired. And now you're battling. Mm -hmm. So Genesis 6, 3. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he is also flesh. Oh, so see, look. So there is the Spirit of God and there is man. Not every man has that Spirit. God says, I, listen, I'm angry with that Spirit. I'm angry with that flesh. I am against that. My Spirit cannot strive with you unless you get what we read uh, countless times in John chapter 3, the new birth. To get the Holy Spirit to God. But other than that, God just loves me. No, He don't. If you're not a child of God, if you don't have the second birth, and you don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you for right and wrong, the Bible says God's at enmity with you. There's the Spirit, which you don't have if you're not saved. And there's the flesh that just wants to do whatever you want to do, and look at all the festivals they throw on the beach at you think God looks upon Daytona and says, oh, I'm just so happy with it. And you think you turn around and say, well, God bless America. What goes on in Daytona Beach? Throughout the calendar years? Really? Vegas. And, and then, know. how many churches take part in that nonsense? Surprisingly. I mean, we paid, you know, for the work in the ministry, we paid a church 10 bucks to park our car, which other people paid their money to go, and we did not... Let's utilize ourselves, but people would pay the ten bucks to go fletching themselves, which would be against God on what they call a church property, which uh, anything. But now, when you take that advent right there, oh, well, it's a church, it's right, really? You think God would approve for you to take money to go do what they're going to do? Come on. And you got churches today, churches, I'm talking about churches, the name church. They will have alcohol, they will have parties, they will have things of the flesh to gain the flesh for entertainment. Smoke machines, lights, and messages will, oh, I feel so good after that. Bob Jones Sr. would say, the preacher didn't make me feel mean, he's no preacher at all. So we have a flesh issue, and we have a spirit issue, and now that we're saved, we have both issues. We have a war going inside ourselves right now. And it's not going to end to the rapture. The Lord carries. It's not going to end until you get to the graveyard. You are still... Listen, salvation. And I try to do this when I preach the gospel. It's not going to stop you from sinning. It will put a yield. Now, there are some sins since I've been saved, I have stopped and I don't do. Amen. Glory to God. But there are some sins I still do, I'm still going to do, and I hate doing them, I don't want anything to do with them, and the flesh says, ha ha, I won. Mm. You know? So Matthew chapter 26, 41. I mean, let's look at the basics of sin. Alright? Matthew 26, 41. Oh, you know, you may say, well, I've never sinned. How, how's your gripe and complaint? <laughs> now, open up a casket and, and see if they're gripe and complaining about the darkness. No, they're not. You can take all the sins in the world and lay on the table with a dead man there. He ain't going to care. But you take a little child and say, honey, mama made, you some, made, some, made some cookies for whatever event. Don't touch the cookie." 
You have now excited that flesh and that child. That child may be saved or whatever, I don't know. But you excited that flesh, he's got to have a cookie. Mm. He's got to have a stolen cookie. Matthew 20, and that's a battle of the flesh. Mm. Matthew 26, 41. And he went again, and he went away again the second time, and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father. This is not what I 41, you're reading 42. 42. Oh, watch and pray. I can almost fade it out this way. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. That Holy Spirit that dwells in you, Christian has all great power to never sin. You have the capability, believe it or not, I don't, people may hate you for saying it, but you have the capability of being sinless. The Holy Spirit's in you, and He's sinless. But, the flesh is weak. And Satan knows. And when we read those three, those three things, when we read about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Satan knows we're attacking you right now. Now Satan could have had set up right here on this table when we came here. He could have set up on all these tables all kinds of cans of beer. All the cans of beer of all the world. I, was, I could sit down and knock them all off, throw them in the garbage can and not have anything to do with that. Alright? That has no pleasure to me. But there are sins I'm not going to tell you, but there are sins that, God, that Satan can lay out on the table right now. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Oh. I'll tell you one great sin. How about this one? And this, this is for our generation, and not so for Rachel. You're going to the store, you're going grocery shopping. And you're putting stuff in your carriage. You're like, okay, is this good? I can see now the what, Why am I singing that song? I've done that. And I was work, when I worked for the grocery store, I'm like, oh. Wait a minute, I'm not supposed to be singing them songs, but it's in your heart. Yeah, and you're singing. Yeah. And I'll tell you what the Holy Spirit did to me. He said, listen, all right, you, we can stop this thing. I said, I want to. Why don't you just listen to the words? And when I started listening to the words and not singing, mm. ooh, that gave me a whole ministry there. How about that? I mean, are we supposed to be, you know, I got the joy, 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 down great in my heart. You know, Jesus loves me, this I know. And then you start singing that perverted mess that's playing in the overhead. I mean, it goes to the gro grocery store. Grandma got ran over by on earth. Am I? The flesh like it, you know, tap your foot, tap your foot. And guess what? That kind of music that's played in the overhead has a Christian title that's put in the churches today to make you. Now, I don't believe we should sing as a dove. I've already done it. It's a wrong hymn. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. But when I play the musical version on my computer and read in my Bible, I can take the musical version and I can add to the spiritualness of my heart to sing another song to Jesus. Okay? We can do that. But we have a battle here. We have a battle of the flesh and we have the battle of the spirit and the flesh, Jesus said, is weak. Three guys, the, the Peter, James, and John. Peter is praying, I mean, God is praying to God. Jesus is praying to God. And he says, you guys can stay awake. They just had a Baptist fellowship. They just had a dinner. It's the middle of the night. Of course they're going to fall asleep. But it wasn't time to fall asleep. Utica, he's sitting in the window and Peter and John, uh, Paul's this long preaching. He falls out asleep and then falls out the window. Oh, our flesh doesn't like it. But, oh, you know, we're, you know, we don't have a television, we have a computer, but, you know, we're going through things, we see it, oh, I like that movie. And you'll stay up all night to watch that movie. Oh, yeah. You've seen the end of it 400,000 times. Or this book, oh, I'm interested in this book, and you'll, you'll stay away. i got to read this one more time. i got to find what's going on. What's going on? And then, oh, church is so boring. Bible reading. Uh, I'm tired. I, I read a chapter. That's good enough for today. Close it. That's the flesh. Mm -hmm. The Spirit's like, read more, study more, listen more. It is a constant battle. And remember, that flesh is weak. weak. It will give in. And Satan knows your desires. 
You can't hide from him. I know for a fact he cannot hide. And I'm amazed at what he does. Every once in a while, I, listen, I, I was, I was drunk, drinking, drunk and all that. Once in a while, he'll put, he'll put a beer in front of me. I just don't care. There's other things he put in front of me. I have a little desire. But he knows in our life, and we all know sitting here, we know what Satan puts in front of us. Like, I got you. And he goes, runs up to God, Job 1 and 2. <laughs> you think he's so great? Yeah, yeah. Watch this, God. Now, when Job lost everything, that did not affect him. When Job got the boils, that didn't affect him. When his wife came yelling at him, that didn't affect him. When he had three friends started talking to him, started yelling at him, started accusing him of things. Whoa! That's what started. And Satan knew if I bring those three friends, if I start accusing him, you know, well, that was his self righteousness. Self How dare you tell me about me? That was his thing. His self righteousness was his thing. I mean, one day, you know, Eve's just walking through the beautiful paradise of wonderfulness of God to walk in, and she's looking, and Satan says, hey. No, that's good. Doesn't God tell me? Boom. How about David? David's just on taking a look. Bible says she was washing herself. That was it. She could have been washing the acne on her face. She could have been washing her hands. There was no, we don't even know if there was nudity. That's put it in there. Just looking. A smell. That's our sick mind. Thinking that yeah, that's a, yeah, that's our sick mind. That she was naked. She, she could, could have been washing clothes. her hands. She could have been washing dirt off her feet. Right. And, we, and then, you know, you go all kinds of preaching messages about why it's not so. And then, you know, look who I am. And when we were talking about genealogies before the Bible said, I can trace my genealogy. I've got royal yeah, blood. Blue blood. <laughs> yeah, but let's take you to the doctor and see what's in your blood. <laughs> yeah. Okay? I mean, that blue blood of England and all the royalty, man, it's all fouled up. It's all wicked. It's all mess. Mm -hmm. So, Luke 24, 39... Our flesh is weak. And you know how God's going to relieve, relieve that one day? He's going to give you a brand new body. Luke 24, 39. He's going to give us a brand new body. He's going to give us a sinless body. And we're not going to have those desires. And one time Jesus said, we're not going to be, we're going to be like the angels. There'll be no marriage in heaven. We won't have any of those kind of relations and all that. We have a pure body of a being that is incapable of ever doing wrong, ever since. That's not now. That's not now. It's not going to end till we die of the rapture. Now, you can take a sword and you can slice up a dead body. He ain't going to complain at all. Now, you put me in a dentist's chair and he don't give me no Novocaine. I'm going to grab at his face and I'm going to start poking him and punching him, <laughs> even if he is a brother in the Lord, because I've done, done it. I hate pain. And the flesh is weak. The Holy Spirit said, we can endure this. How can we endure it? Read Fox's Book of Martyrs. How on earth do those people go through those tortures? There are people being burned on stakes alive, and they're singing hymns to God as they're burning. The flesh is weak, but the Holy Spirit. That's the only way you can do it. That's the only way you can do it. The Holy Spirit and those people in the book of Fox's Book of Martyrs and Martyrs and Mirror has to be they were in the Spirit and not in the flesh. You are capable. You are capable of overpowering that flesh. But are you willing? What did it say? In Luke 24, 39. Behold my hand. This is Jesus. Red letter if you got it. And my feet. Oh, look at it. He's got hands and feet. That it is myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see me have. So Jesus is not a ghost. He's not a bed sheet. He's not going to be a phantom in a window. He has a body and he has a flesh. 
But he's got a body in flesh that has no sin, that has no desires. That's the only desire he has right now. Is he's, he's, he's men that he's been with for three, three and a half years. Well, you know, you get right. And recognize what I said, but there it is. There, and we're going to have that same body. We're going to have fingers. We're going to have hands. We're going to have eyes. We're going to have ears. We're going to have a nose. We got the same body that Jesus has without the scars. And we'll have it in sinless perfection. The Bible says there'll be no more sorrow, no more tears, no more sin. One day, this body we're going to have one day, forever. But right now, is that thing that, that's trouble. You could be locked up solitary. You could be on an on a, on a island somewhere all by yourself. And you're going to sin some way, somehow. You're going to wish you had one more coconut that you ate the last coconut. That's coveting. That's a sin. Oh, I wish that boat would come over here and rescue. That's coveting. That's a sin. You know? So John 6... Six, uh, John 6, 63. And the condition we're reading about today is thanks to Adam and Eve. They weren't like this. There was... But then again, you can't say there was no desire because she was looking at that fruit. When Satan present, when we get to glory, Satan is cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever and never to come out. So that desire of Satan will be gone even more. Our enemy is gone. In Luke 6.63, it is the spirit that quickens, that means make alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Alright, so, there's life by the spirit. Anything you can do of the flesh profits God nothing. Now, if you read sometimes, John chapter 6, and we're not going to, this is where Jesus says, John chapter 6, eat of my flesh, and I'll try life. And this is where the Catholics get their mass, that if you eat Jesus, the little body of Jesus, you'll have life. So when they give you that little piece of flesh, they say it becomes the body of Jesus, you quote to them, the flesh profiteth nothing. There it is. Just after he said that. Meat and food will have no being to God. But the words I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. And Jesus has said, if you're to eat me, you're not physically, literally eat me, because it was, it was an example he was given. That, that's not going to give you eternal life. The Spirit. And a lot of people who take part in the Mass do not, are not saved. It's a lot. And say all. There's no life in them. And they can eat all the Jesus as they want. If they don't have the Holy Spirit, that flesh ain't going to do them no good. It ain't going to do God no good. So again, we see now we have a thing with the Spirit and the words. Alright, what's the... Uh, let me take a little brief thing with, with the Mass here, but get off that real quick. Before the law, during the law, after the law, in the church age, it says you're not to eat blood. It's forbidden. The Word of God said, no blood eating. And then you go and drink the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood. You're violating Scripture. That's incorrect. That's flesh. That's, that's, the flesh will say, oh, you know how I can please God? I can do something. I will make up. There are people who will go to church and they will sit in that pew and say, God, aren't you glad I'm here today? God, you see how much, look, look, look on, this, on this form the IRS. See how much charity I've given God? How, isn't that so great? Look how good I am. Flesh, prophet is nothing. Not of works, the Bible says, unless any man boast. Fleshing will make you boast. 
So that's wrong. Romans 8.1. The biggest enemy you got is yourself. I mean, the Garden of Adam and Eve. Did it say that Adam and Eve had a fight? No, it didn't. She just had a desire and something she couldn't have. And what was that? That's the flesh. Oh, I like that. It looks so good. I wonder how it tastes. Mean God. Won't let me have it. She's got everything. There may have been fruit trees that we don't have fruits anymore. Thanks to the flood. We don't know. Maybe it had a cheesecake tree. I don't know. That flood destroyed many, much of the earth. But, oh, if I could just have one. Now, how about our sins? Oh, come on. I, you know, we all lie, but, you know, I haven't told a lie. I, I try to do right, Lord, and now we're boasting. And that's a sin. See that? That's the flesh stepping in there. You know the number one sin we have is the self-righteous. Look up. You stepped on my toes. Ow, that hurt. Stop it. You offended me. Ow, stop it. Hurt me. Make me feel bad. That's the flesh. He didn't say my name. He didn't mention me. He didn't shake my hand. He didn't give me the attention. Well, how wicked we are. Romans 8.1 There is therefore now, now, right now, right now, even now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Well, look at that. I am, the Bible says, I am a child of God and I don't sin. Well, yes you do. Yeah, but I've had this spiritual circumcision. The flesh has been cut away from my soul. In the eyes of God, the flesh is over there having a good time, and my soul's over there. I don't even want to acknowledge that. That idiot. I know that's me over there, but oh, man. It's almost like, a, it's almost like an out-of-body experience. Now, where do you get that from? You're looking at you, have you ever looked at yourself and you sin? It's like, why? God, I'm so... Ugh. I, I get those moments. I'm, I'm dealing with a man right now who's growing the Lord. He's like, oh, I wanted to give him a gospel tag. Why didn't you? I didn't one. Pride. And he smacked himself. Why couldn't I have said that to them and said to outlier? And you think about something. Why did I do that? Now, which is Christ Jesus, who walked not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's Jesus Christ. We can do that. Jesus Christ was our example. All right? You're going to go to heaven by your works. You can't even control your flesh. We are capable of being holy. But we make it into baloney by the flesh. Unclean. And who knows what the ingredients are. There are, you know, there are things we do during the day we sin and we don't even know we sin. How about that dream you had? What dream? Uh-oh. Doesn't the Bible say every idle word you something? What about the dream you told you? You don't even remember what the dream was. How about that? How about the words you said that you didn't mean to say that you said? How about those thoughts? Oh, I'm going to go take on the Catholic Church. Why don't you take on yourself first? That's when you got the gift of sarcasm. You got, I got to watch my tongue. Because it will get in the way. And James says, your tongue is a world of fire, of hell. Romans 8.5. Romans 8.5. You will have wood, hay, or stubble at the judgment seat of Christ. I can't believe. Gold, silver, precious stone? I don't know. But there would be wood, hay, or stone. I guarantee it. Eight five. For they that are after the flesh, there we go, do mind the things of the flesh. Feed me. Sight me. Take care of me. My diaper's wet. Change me. That goes only from a baby. I want food. Mama's tired. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't care. Take care of me. I don't have nothing wrong with me. I'm just going to cry because I know you're going to come and hold me. That happened from infancy. That baby doesn't doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> kind of interesting, isn't it? Our flesh wants to take care of our flesh. You know where we contradict ourselves in that case? Isn't it nice to be clothed? You know, have clothes on us, and you know, maybe a little cold, you put a long sleeve shirt on it, and yet the flesh says, I want to get naked. 
I want to show you. And that's pleasing the flesh too. Everybody can see me. We saw that a couple times at the, at the Bikers Week. Mm. Really, you, you, you got to do that for what? 99% of women here are not doing what, you, what you're doing. Just 1% idiotic, but that's the flesh. They look at me. And you gotta fight that flesh. I gotta fight that flesh. Every time we go by the sweet area of the grocery store, <laughs> many times I said no to cheesecake and look, turn around, and look at that bag. And I'm, we're, we're leaving the cheesecake at that. Oh, I want cheesecake. You know. But what it says is, verse five. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Now, what's that? I'm going to set a date and a time. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to study my Bible. Now, right now, I'm I'm going to go through. I'm doing it again. I'm going through the Book of Hebrews. Actually, I'm going to probably go try to go through all my courses again because I'm learning a lot more than when I went to school. But I have realized in the Book of Hebrews, we're doing. I got to set a time. If I don't set a specific date, I'm not going to do Hebrews because the flesh says we can find something else to do. You got to set a date. You can't say, "Well, I'm going to." No, I will. Saturday morning, except we be sick or unable completely or in the hospital, we're going to be there preaching the, the word of the gospel to people unless you free. Friday, we have a set time to be at that table unless it's pouring rain and wind is going crazy until I get tarts. I want to get tarts. I keep. I gotta wait to get that for our table. But we have to set a time because the flesh needs no time. But for God, we gotta set a time to do something. How's your prayer life then? Set a date and a time. On Monday afternoon or every day at 2 o'clock or whatever, you gotta set that time for the Spirit. You could be just sitting down and right, reading a book, playing a game, do whatever you do. And just all of a sudden your flesh says, you know what? I'm gonna move for chocolate chip cookie. And you, if you got it, you go, you will get it. There's no set time to have it. There's no set time to have that candy bar. There's no set time to go. But your flesh can get up any time of the day and do what it wants. How's going out witnessing? How's reading the Bible? How's prayer? How's studying the Word of God? How's serving God? You must set a time for that. You must set a date for that. Because the flesh is weak. Though the Spirit is willing you got to battle this thing. I mean, you can go conquer all the Jehovah Witnesses you want. You can go conquer all the uh, Calvinism you want. If you haven't gotten over yourself, then you become a hypocrite. We're all sinners. How are you doing with your body? Are you fighting? Now listen, I'm not going to say you're going to win the battle, but how are you fighting? Or are you telling, okay, you go to, hey, we look at, oh, is that kid a brat? Oh, look at that kid's a brat. Look at that mother. Just, you know, hey, tie it up. One, two, three. How are you doing with your body? How are you doing with your body? You give your body a timeout? No, it's okay. We, we'll have a little slice. Sin is sin. Romans 8, 9. Oh, this is a heart. But ye are not in the flesh. If, now, this is, I said, this is to Christians. You're not in the flesh. You are a child of God. Your flesh sins. Your flesh is here right now. If I pinch you, if I slap me. You say, ow. But you're not of that. That flesh is not to have control over you. But in, in the Spirit, look at that capital S. That's the Holy Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Do you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you? And you're not in the flesh. Outside yourself from your body and try to keep that body under control. But realize, it's hard to keep under control. But it's capable. And remember, it's weak. If you got a problem with, let's say, pornography, then you go into the bookstore, stay away from that section. You got a problem with alcohol or anything like that? Don't go by that section. Don't go by a bar. Don't go. I mean, when we did the walk around 
Main Street. I can, re I can remember those smells. It didn't bother me, but I remember those smells. I didn't realize a bar had a smell until a couple weeks ago. I was like, oh. I hadn't smelled that in a long time. It didn't believe me. Stay away from that. Smells will get you. You got a problem with candy? Don't buy it. Yeah. Preaching to the choir over here. <laughs> candy. If the Holy Spirit of God dwells in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not saved, and you can do all the fasting you want. You can do all the Lent you want. God doesn't care. You're, a, you're an unsaved person. You're, you're just the flesh. That's all you are. You have no spirit. You have no new birth. You have no life. Do whatever you want in the name of religion. You're not mine. You're in the Holy Spirit. You're saved. You've got the new birth. you got a battle. you got to tell your flesh, no. you got you got to say, let the Holy Spirit do it. No. And if you've ever read Pilgrim's Progress, when he comes with these two children in one room, you got one that's, that's patient. I forget the other one. That, and he's jumping around the room. And he's hanging. And patient's like, I'll just wait. I'll just wait. One day God will take care of you. The other one, he just jumps around the room and he loses. And we lose when we let the flesh win. Because when we let the flesh win, we're going to get wood, hay, or stubble if we don't repent of it. And we forget when we dwell in the Spirit that we have the power, but when we do the flesh, that is weak. And we forget the fact is that Jesus is coming and what if he catches us in this flesh? That's not good. Because if he catches us at the moment of death or rapture, and we are living in the flesh, we have sinned, and there's no way for you to confess that sin if you're dead or been raptured. So how do we... Oh, in the flesh we take our minds off God. Where in the spirit we are always thinking about God. And not always, though, too. You ever been reading your Bible? You ever been studying? You ever been... And that wicked thought comes in your head. Like, oh, how powerful that flesh is. But it says, I'm tired of that. <laughs> it's weak, the Bible says. 8.13. Romans 8.13. And before we, I read this one, I'm going to quote another verse here. The wages of sin is death. That is written to Christians. I know we use it for evangelism, and you can. But the wages of sin is death. Is written to born again Bible believing people who have the Spirit. You know why you're going to die, Christian? Because you're a sinner. I'm saved, still a sinner. So somebody comes up to you and says, "Well, I'm I'm a Christian. I don't sin." You're going to die? Well, yeah, liar. Confess. You just lied. That's a sin. And I dealt with a guy who completely went right off the wall. Never, never. He doesn't ever sin, so you'll get some little warning. Just give you a little warning. But way to the sin is, listen, I, I sin, I'm going to die. That's why. Now, if I step out in front of a get Greyhound bus and I shoot it without looking both ways to get flattened under the sidewalk, you can write down the idiot got ran over by, by a Greyhound bus and he was a sinner. Amazing, a death certificate doesn't have two spots. A death certificate should say he was a sinner. And then he died. Of, but where we are now, verse 13... For if we live after the flesh, right? You want to be a fleshy Christian? You want to be a Christian? How about the church? I'm talking about churches as in Christians who live after the flesh. Is it possible? I can show you five, six, seven videos of churches right now. by my computer. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify, that means kill, mortician, mortuary, the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Now, I'm going to get eternal life by Jesus Christ. What does it mean, death? Die. Because if I live after the flesh, everything that doesn't see the Christ is going to be burnt up and you're going to have nothing to live for. That's what the carnality of the church and Satan is doing to Christians. Hey, you may be saved. But when you, when that smoke clears the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to be quite shocked. 
And that, in, in the Bible, likens that to death. Now, John the Baptist said, He that has the Son, capital S-O-N, has everlasting life. He that has not the Son, capital S-O-N, has not life, but the wrath of God by and upon him. The Bible relates going to hell as no life at all. And it is, but you're still living. You have an eternal soul in hell. But the Bible says that's not really living. And on the other hand, what we just read here, you could be saved and have eternal life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you live carnal, you live after the flesh, that's not living. And how do you go through eternal life in New Jerusalem when you're not having any crown? I don't know. I can't answer that. Because there's no ending. And yet there are going to be people in heaven who have crowns and many crowns. There are going to be people in heaven who have one crown. They gave it their all, but they got a crown. There are going to be people in heaven who have no crowns at all. And there they are, right there. I can't even explain that to go any further. Galatians 5.16 I can't explain what it's going to be like to go through heaven and not have crowns where you're going to see other people have crowns. And have your pastor go to heaven and have not explained to you how to get crowned. That, that. Yeah. Galatians 5.16 There we go. This is written to save Christians. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, capital F, here you go. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I don't want to do that anymore. Get in the Spirit. You know, I think of myself, get in the Spirit. Christ never thought of himself. For the flesh lusteth, isn't that a great word? <laughs> Look at that word Paul called out. Lusted. That's lust. <laughs> Against the spirit. That's kind of odd. You would think, you would think of lust, you know. <laughs> sexual is not sexual. It can also be, I am so disgusted with, with you. I am so, I don't want to not have anything to do with you. Kind of funny word for lust. And the spirit against the flesh. Notice the spirit doesn't say lust. <laughs> The flesh lust is against the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit, I'm against the flesh. No lust at all. Isn't that interesting wording? I wonder what the new Bible said. I'm not even going to mess with it. And these, the flesh and the Spirit, are contrary the one to the other. The Holy Spirit is a red light and the flesh is a green light. And your modern churches today are a yellow light. Go through consciousness. Holy Spirit said, stop it. Well, they got their Bible. I got ours. God loves them. Kind of interesting. So that you cannot do the things that you would. Oh, isn't that a hard split? That's good or bad. I am not supposed to do that. That's sin. I am supposed to do that, but it's God. And you're just... There you go again. You're fighting the spirit. You're fighting the flesh all over again. Uh, Galatians 6 8. Oh, this is a hard one. So we'll start in verse 7. I always, quote, I always like verse 7. Galatians 6 7. I'm a Christian and I got lung cancer. I'm a Christian and I got bad bad liver now. I'm a Christian and my brain's been fried by dope and all that. I'm a Christian. Paul's right to the Christian. Be not deceived by the devil. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth that he shall also reap. Go ahead, do the drugs, do the alcohol, do the tobacco, do the fighting. Be an idiot. Don't take care of yourself. I'll give you diabetes. And don't cry baby about it. It's your fault. Being an idiot. Lose an arm or leg. It's your fault. Stop cry baby. That's our holy God. Verse 8. 
For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. That's decaying, that's rotting, that's a dead body. Go dig up the people in the graveyard. You know why they're rotting? Because they sin. You know why they're missing body parts? Because they sin. You know why their body parts been affected? Because it's sin. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now there's that ver now there's life compared to what we just read. If you do right in the Spirit, you're going to earn crowns and rewards, and you will have them in eternal life forever. Now I don't know if we're going to cast them out Jesus with the 24 elders, but if we do, it would be great to have one to throw at Jesus. It would be bad to throw down your, I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing to give to Jesus. Kind of bad. First Timothy three sixteen. Last place. First Timothy three sixteen. Paul writes to a young preacher boy, and he's had some pretty good churches. One of them was the Corinth church, <laughs> a carnal church. You want to know anything about fleshy church? Study the, the Corinthian church. Which Rachel and I have seen Daytona Beach and forget where it is now. We see the new Corinthian church. I was like, wow. I imagine the new is the world is more wicked than the... But we've seen that. I don't know. Never been there. <clears throat> First Timothy 3.16 And without controversy... That's a fleshy thing, controversy. Great is the mystery of Godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. There he is, 100% man. Flesh. Fingernails. Hair. Nose. Justified in the spirit. Look at that flesh and spirit. And yet he did it without sin. Hi. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. We just looked at the flesh and spirit, our enmity. They hate each other. They, well, the Holy Spirit don't hate. <laughs> but what did we just read? I'm incapable. Jesus had the flesh, and he had the capital S spirit, and he lived a sinless life. And he did it without sin. If you didn't know what sin was meant. Now, how's that? Now, if you're going to argue with me, and that's crazy, you've seen it, that Jesus is not God. In the flesh, 100%, 100% flesh. And in the spirit, 100% God, he did not sin. That has to be God. It can't be anything else. No way. No way. Next week we'll pick up the first, oh, the first, there I go again. John chapter 1. Verse 13. Lord God comes down that I'm a saved sinner. I'm not saved, I'm not saved without sin. And Lord, if you're to tarry this sin, will, this body of wickedness and sin will be put into a coffin, into a grave, dead. You'll never sin again. Or you, Lord, you can call us any moment, any time. It'll be a flesh that will never sin. And yet, Lord, you're going to give us a brand new body without sin, without sorrow, without pain, without death, no longer. And Lord God, help us and give us strength through the Spirit to overcome this weak flesh. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen.